This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. And welcome back. We've had our first major snowfall of the year, and while many of us spent time playing in the snow, too much exposure to the cold can actually cause some damage. Now today we have Dr. Justin Puckett from Complete Family Medicine here to talk with us more about it and signs to look for. So we've heard of frostbite and all hypothermia and all that stuff. So kind of just explain the difference between the two. Sure. Um, frostbite or, and frost nip, uh, there's actually three levels. There's frost nip, which is just whenever you get very superficial um, on the skin and mostly that's direct damage from the cold. Frostbite occurs whenever the whenever the, it gets a little bit deeper, and we think about frostbite, frost nip as being um, just cold related. But really, what's going on is uh, whenever the body senses that that extremity is getting cold, uh, then it clamps down those blood vessels and slows the supply. Because it, if if it's cold outside, your hands, your ears are getting cold. It doesn't want to run your blood through a little refrigeration unit. So it will clamp down the blood supply. And then once you do that, you don't get oxygen. It's just like putting a tourniquet around your finger or something that you'll lose blood supply and ultimately that'll die. So there's frost nip, there's frost, there's uh, uh, frostbite, and then there's deep frostbite. And that deep frostbite can end up causing limb loss. And then hypothermia is the more severe life-threatening condition whenever your whole body gets cold from the in entirely from the inside out. Okay, so how how common or how long would you have to be outside to get frostbite? You know, it really depends. Every person's different. It depends on how well you're dressed, whether the winds are blowing, are your hands wet, and a lot of components. But people think that you have to be out there all day, and that's simply not true. In the wrong conditions, even 15 or 20 minutes in the most uh, cold and, and horrid conditions can really give, can get, can get pretty severe frostbite. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about hypothermia. You just mentioned it. What are some signs to look for uh, to see if we are or somebody else is experiencing hypothermia? We actually have um, a couple things to, to pop up on here while you're talking about it. Sure. Um, hypothermia is when your core body temperature falls below 95 degrees. And when that happens, uh, you'll, you'll start to shiver. If you remember when we talked about um, hyperthermia this summer, uh, kind of the reverse of this. So instead of sweating, we're talking about shivering. And you'll initially shiver aggressively, but once the body kind of gets so cold, it'll kind of give up and shivering might cease. And then that's a, a sign of, uh, of end stage uh, conditions. Um, you might also notice that you're clump, that the person's clumsy. They've got lack of coordination. They often don't realize just how bad of shape that they're in. Uh, because their brain gets uh, cold blood to it, it starts to mess up their speech. They'll fall, they won't think well, and again, they'll make poor decisions. Uh, and they'll do things like you put warm clothes on them and they try to take them off. Also, uh, the, they become very drowsy, um, apathetic about their condition, uh, and they might even lose cautious, uh, consciousness and, and their pulse may leave, and then you may have to start CPR. Okay, now let's talk about what should we do? What are some tips we should do before, you know, if we call, you know, 911 and we're waiting for EMS or paramedics to come? What can we do to help? help the situation, I sure. guess I'm trying to say. Well, with, with hypothermia, the first thing you want to do is get them out of the environment. So be gentle when you're doing that because extra friction um, can damage the, the cold skin. Um, it can also uh, be t cause too much stress and put the person into cardiac arrest. So get them out of the cold, remove any wet clothing that they have, wrap them up with blankets all the way around. Don't forget to insulate them from the ground if you're stuck outside. Um, then you want to just monitor their breathing um, you can share your body heat, so getting next to them inside the blankets because your body temperature is higher than theirs. If you have some non-alcoholic, non-caffeinated beverages, you can provide those as long as the patient's able to, to swallow well. And then you can use warm, dry compresses. So we don't want to use wet heat because that can make things worse. But packing the armpit, the, the neck, and the groin where you have direct access to, to the big blood vessels so you can kind of warm up from the inside out. But again, you don't want to apply direct heat. You don't want to use anything like a heating pad, that sort of thing. It can actually damage the skin even more. All right. And really quickly, let's talk about um, some ways to um, prevent cold-related injuries. Yeah. Think about the, the acronym COLD. So the first thing that you want to do is cover yourself um, to make sure that everything's covered, your head, your fingers, your hands. Actually, the reason why mittens were invented was because we learned when we were out in the cold that keeping our fingers next to each other actually kept our body warmer. Um, so, but you want to keep covered everywhere. Uh, don't overexert. If you're going to go outside and bundle up and cut wood all day, you're producing a lot of sweat 
And while you're doing that, you're making yourself wet and it can become just the same as falling in, a, in the creek. Um, wear layers so that you can take on and put on as necessary and then stay as dry as possible. That's probably the number one thing you can do is keeping yourself dry. Very good tips. So what we'll do is we'll post everything on our website at heartlandconnection.com and we'll also link up uh, Dr. Puckett's information with Complete Family Medicine if they have any questions or if you know they're actually experiencing any of this, obviously call 911 as soon as possible and then kind of just do everything we just talked about. So yep. thank you so much, especially with more snow on the way and colder temperatures. Very good information to know, so thanks. Awesome, thank you. And we'll be right back.